In the spring of 1974, a large brush fire swept across the property owned by Antoine and Jerry Betts. While assessing the damage, they found something unusual. In the smoldering grass lay a highly polished metal sphere, later known as the Betts Sphere, or the Betts Orb. Antoine and Jerry's 21-year-old son, Terry Betts, picked up the sphere. Despite being only 8 inches in diameter, it was extremely heavy. The Betts family then made a decision that would change their lives. They brought the sphere home. I have no knowledge of how the sphere itself happened to be in the place where I found it. Um, <clears throat> as I've stated previously, when I found it, it was on top of the ground. It was not embedded. Um, I saw no charred marks, no, you know, no big indentations in the ground. In fact, it looks as if, as if someone had taken it and set it in the spot. But uh, as to how it got there, I, nor anyone else I know, has any knowledge of this. The family's property was on Fort George Island, near Jacksonville, Florida. The Betts property covered 88 acres and was primarily used for raising trees for timber. Antoine Betts was a marine engineer, his wife Jerry was an artist, and they had six children. The Betts home, which they nicknamed the castle, was essentially a mansion. The Betts family was educated and well off, not seeking fortune or fame. The Betts sphere was just under 8 inches in diameter and weighed about 21 pounds, making it slightly smaller than a bowling ball but much heavier. The sphere had no seams, weld marks, or signs of machining, only a few scuffs and scratches, and a 3mm triangle etched or stamped into it. It didn't seem dangerous, so Terry brought it home and placed it on his windowsill with other collectibles, initially not thinking much about it. But a few weeks later, that would change. Terry and a friend were in his room playing guitar when they noticed a humming sound. They stopped playing to listen, and the hum faded away. After a minute, they shrugged and resumed playing. The humming returned. Terry walked around his room strumming the guitar and realized the sphere vibrated with the notes he played. He played louder, and the sphere vibrated more intensely and then started buzzing. At this point, the family dog began whining, seemingly disturbed by the sound. Terry decided to experiment. He gently tapped the sphere with a hammer, and it responded with a ringing sound. Fascinated by the sphere's reaction to sound, he took it into the living room to show his family. Everyone gathered around. Terry set the ball down to get his hammer and guitar. Though nobody was touching the sphere, it started to move on its own. What started as an intriguing find in the woods turned out to have remarkable properties. The Beth sphere responded to sound and touch and demonstrated the ability to move on its own. When rolled across the ground, it would move, stop, vibrate, change direction, and sometimes return to the person who rolled it. Its behavior varied, with some rolls lasting only a few seconds, while others extended up to five minutes. And once it continued for 12 minutes before stopping. Initially, the Betzes thought it might be a gyroscope, explaining its movement, but gyroscopes don't chase people, startle pets, or play guitar. To test it further, they placed the sphere on a glass-topped coffee table and pushed it. Instead of falling off, it rolled around the edge, moved to the center, and stopped. When they tilted the table to make the sphere fall onto the floor, it defied expectations and rolled up the incline as if trying to avoid falling. Jerry picked up the sphere and began shaking it. The sphere didn't react well to this. In a newspaper report, Jerry described the sensation. If you shake the ball vigorously and then place it on the ground, it feels just like a huge Mexican jumping bean trying to escape. The Betts family discovered that the sphere had a magnetic field. A paper clip would stick to it, but could be easily removed. However, after rolling around for a while, the magnetic field became stronger. After a few minutes of rolling, a mayonnaise jar lid stuck to it and couldn't be removed. They considered the possibility that it might be solar-powered. The sphere seemed more active in sunlight, vibrating gently and emitting a low hum as if it had a motor inside. When brought back indoors, it remained warm for three days. Eventually, a family friend contacted the Jacksonville Journal, and although the photographer arrived as a skeptic, he left convinced. Lon Anger was a longtime photographer for the Jacksonville Journal and had seen it all. When he arrived at the Betts' home, he told Jerry, I'm wary of this kind of thing. Mrs. Betts showed him the orb and said, You won't believe this if you don't see it. They instructed him to place the orb on the floor and give it a push. It rolled away and stopped. 
but then it turned by itself, rolled about four feet, stopped, turned again, and rolled eight feet to the left before making a large arc and returning to his feet. Convinced, Anger reported the story, and the bet sphere quickly became an overnight sensation. Journalists from around the world sought interviews, and the Betts family found themselves overwhelmed by the constant calls. In the 70s, with no call waiting, it was nearly impossible to manage the influx of calls. We came to Fort George Island for peace and quiet, but now we can't escape the phone, said Miss Betts. When the calls stop, the East Coast wakes up and starts calling. Although the Betzes weren't keen on giving interviews, they were eager to help identify the sphere. Eventually, a call came through that was hard for the Betz family to ignore. The military wanted to inspect the sphere, despite Jerry's initial refusal. His resistance irritated the government, but he stood his ground, which he and others found admirable. Eventually, Jerry agreed to lend the sphere to the Navy for two weeks under the condition that if it wasn't military property, it would be returned. He had the Navy sign a contract to ensure a comprehensive report and return of the sphere if it was not government-owned. The Navy conducted various tests. The sphere measured 7.96 inches in diameter and weighed 21.34 pounds. It was made of a magnetic stainless steel alloy capable of withstanding extreme heat and pressure. The spectrograph identified it as stainless steel grade 431, and it had four magnetic poles with unusual patterns and varying strengths. However, X-ray attempts to investigate further were unsuccessful. The Navy planned to use a more powerful machine and additional spectrograph tests, but was unable to get conclusive results. After two weeks, the Navy confirmed the sphere wasn't dangerous or government property and returned it to the Betts family. Oddly, when a Navy serviceman delivered the sphere, he also brought a manila envelope containing X-ray images of the sphere's internal structure, revealing that something was inside it. The X-ray results were surprising. The sphere had an outer shell about half an inch thick, with multiple layers of steel of varying densities inside. At the core, roughly the size of an apple, was a hollow space containing three smaller spheres, each with tiny wires attached. One question was what these objects inside the sphere were. The bigger question was how they got inside, since there was no visible seam or hole. Typically, objects were inserted by cutting the sphere in half and sealing it or by drilling a hole, but neither method was apparent here. Even Navy scientists couldn't solve the mystery. The Navy wanted to drill into the sphere, but Jerry refused. Meanwhile, some friends, neighbors, and media speculated that the sphere could be extraterrestrial due to its response to sound, its magnetic field, and its durability. Some thought it might be an alien listening device. The Betzes were skeptical of these theories until the Navy's investigation turned up nothing. If no other explanation is available, this is as logical as any. The nature of objects from other planets is uncertain, and past speculations have been proven wrong. The Navy has ruled out that it's an explosive, but they haven't identified what it is, leaving many questions unanswered. The Betts family consulted scientists for further insight, and their findings only raised more questions. Dr. Carl Williston from the Omega-1 Institute was the first scientist to examine the sphere. After six hours of testing, he discovered that the sphere was emitting radio waves. He also verified the Navy's observation of four poles, but couldn't explain the magnetic field patterns, which seemed to defy physical laws. Additionally, Dr. Williston observed that the sphere moved independently across surfaces. He confirmed the exterior was stainless steel grade 431, but also detected traces of an unusually heavy, unidentified element. Notably, there is no concrete evidence that Dr. Williston or the Omega-1 Institute actually exists, leading to speculation that he might have been a foreign operative. The Betts family later consulted Dr. James Harder, an engineering professor who became a trusted advisor. Dr. Harder confirmed Dr. Willingston's findings and stated that the internal spheres were composed of a material with an atomic number of 140. The atomic number indicates the number of protons in an element, and the highest natural atomic number is 92, found in uranium. While scientists can artificially create elements with more protons, the highest achieved so far is 118. Therefore, the element in the sphere is not found on Earth. This led Dr. Harder to consider that the sphere might be a damaged alien probe or an anti-gravity device. 
Dr. J. Allen Hynek, a prominent astronomer and UFO advisor for the U.S. Air Force under various projects, including Project Blue Book, also confirmed the findings of the other scientists. Amid this intense scrutiny, the Betts family became increasingly anxious. A group of scientists traveled to Jacksonville, visited the Betts' home, and offered Jerry $750,000 in cash for the sphere. Adjusted for inflation, that amount would be nearly $4 million today and about $6 million next year. Jerry turned down the offer, which irritated the men. After they left, the family investigated and discovered that the scientists' background was fabricated. They suspected that a foreign government might be trying to obtain the sphere and realized they were in danger. In the 1970s, the National Enquirer offered a cash prize for proof of life on other planets. Despite the Enquirer's reputation, its UFO panel included several respected individuals, including Hynek and Harder, along with multiple PhD holders, a former Supreme Court justice, and a former United States Attorney General. The Betts family chose to bring Terry and the Sphere to the gathering, hoping that with all the experts present, they might get some answers. Dr. Hynek, after examining the sphere, concluded that it was man-made. Despite everyone seeing the sphere roll up a piece of plexiglass from a standstill, the phenomenon remained unexplained. When the idea of drilling into the sphere was raised, Dr. Harder warned that if the sphere contained material with an atomic number as high as 140, drilling could cause it to go critical. Critical, in this context, means that the sphere would undergo a reaction similar to what happens in a nuclear reactor where elements with an atomic number higher than 92 are typically created. Given that the sphere's protons are significantly higher than anything known, drilling into it could potentially cause an explosive reaction. The simulation took a new turn when Terry received a call at the Enquirer's office about his mother's accident. Unable to reach her by phone, he immediately flew back home, leaving the sphere behind. When Terry arrived, he found that his mother, Jerry, was fine, but discovered someone was trying to keep him from the sphere. Jerry instructed him to return to the Enquirer and retrieve it, so Terry complied. Initially, the Enquirer seemed uncooperative, providing a story and stalling. Terry insisted on getting the sphere back, and eventually they admitted it was no longer there. The Enquirer revealed that the UFO panel had taken the sphere to New Orleans for further testing. Terry drove there, only to find the sphere being guarded by the Navy. They informed him that he couldn't approach it while tests were ongoing. After much negotiation, Terry managed to get the sphere back, though the tests had revealed nothing new. As Terry was leaving the facility, a few reporters asked if he could make the sphere do something. Terry agreed and explained that it rolled all over the place when set down. In fact, the Betts family kept the sphere in a bowling bag at home because it wouldn't stay still. When Terry set the sphere down, it remained motionless. No vibrations or movement occurred, so he left. Later, Terry learned from his sister that there were people, not reporters, waiting for him at the airport, so he drove home instead. Back in Florida, the family had the sphere re-examined and x-rayed. They discovered that it no longer had four magnetic poles and now had a seam that wasn't there before. The interior, previously containing three small spheres, was now just dust. The Betts family suspected that the sphere had been switched. Dr. Harder advised caution, expressing distrust towards Dr. Hynek and speculating that he might have been involved in the replacement. Years later, after Dr. Hynek passed away, his son Paul mentioned that the family had a silver sphere. All they knew was that their father had said it was related to a UFO case in Florida. There is no evidence that Hynek stole the sphere, but it is notable that after Hynek was alone with it, the sphere stopped working and a different sphere from Florida appeared at Dr. Hynek's house. This situation overwhelmed the Betts family, who faced relentless media attention and what they believed to be government surveillance. At one point, Jerry was even attacked by someone posing as a repairman. The Betts family eventually retreated from the public eye, selling their house and leaving the island. They stopped giving interviews, writing books, or making movies about the sphere. Jerry, who remains active, runs a blog featuring her artwork and life story, but she does not discuss the Betts sphere. The Betts family never discovered the true nature of the sphere, leaving the question of its origin unanswered. Several theories exist about the Betts sphere. One suggests it could be a downed satellite or a piece of space debris. This theory is plausible, but if it were technological, it might have seams or connectors, which the sphere lacks. Another theory proposes it could be a Foo Fighter. 
During World War II, Allied pilots reported encountering UFOs that followed their aircraft and moved at remarkable speeds. These objects were nicknamed Foo Fighters. Another theory suggests that these UFOs could have been alien atomic weapons, possibly used to destroy Atlantis. Proponents of this theory point to ancient texts, like the Mahabharata, which describes a weapon with the power of the universe and a bright explosion as intense as 10,000 suns. A more conventional explanation is that the Bet Sphere, a mysterious object from the era, was simply industrial equipment. Artist James Derling Jones claimed he lost the sphere years earlier, describing it as a ball check valve used in large pipes. He said it fell from the rack on his Volkswagen bus. This explanation is the most widely accepted. There are a few issues with the idea that the sphere came from a valve. First, the only factory on the island is a paper mill, which does use balls and valves, but these are typically only 7 or 8 pounds. In contrast, the Bet Sphere weighs 21 pounds. The sphere was discovered in the woods, about a mile from the nearest road. While it could theoretically move on its own, rolling a mile seems unlikely. Some argue that the sphere didn't roll by itself. The Bet's family's home had uneven tile floors, and the perfectly balanced sphere was seen rolling on the tile. However, this doesn't explain why it would consistently return to the same person who rolled it. During Navy testing, the sphere didn't roll on its own, although many others witnessed it doing so. Robert Edwards, president of a local supply company, displayed a brand new stainless steel ball from the Bell Howell to a reporter. This ball was 8 inches in diameter and weighed just over 21 pounds, matching the Betts sphere. Despite their wealth, the Betts family didn't seek to profit from the sphere, except for attempting to win a prize from the National Enquirer. They could have earned a lot by selling books about the sphere, especially when it was making international headlines. They didn't, and today the Bet Sphere remains a mystery. It was either taken by the Navy or by Dr. Hynek, and we might never find out. It's possible that one of the greatest scientific discoveries is now just sitting in an old bag in someone's basement. We might only learn its secret if its owner, whoever that might be, decides to take up bowling. The Bet Sphere continues to be a subject of fascination for many. Its enigmatic nature, coupled with the lack of definitive answers, fuels ongoing speculation and theories. Some suggest that the sphere could be a piece of advanced technology or even a relic from a lost civilization, while others believe it might be a military or scientific experiment gone awry. The fact that the sphere's current whereabouts are unknown adds to the mystery. Over the years, various experts have attempted to study or locate the sphere, but none have succeeded in unraveling its secrets. This has led to numerous conspiracy theories and rumors about its true nature and purpose. Despite extensive research and investigation, the Bet Sphere remains one of the most intriguing unsolved mysteries in modern science. It represents a puzzle that has captured the imagination of many, highlighting the human desire to explore the unknown and understand the inexplicable. As technology advances and more information becomes available, there might be new breakthroughs or discoveries related to the Bet Sphere. Until then, it remains a captivating enigma, inviting both skepticism and curiosity from those who encounter its story. So, this seems enough for today's video. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this, though. Stay tuned for more videos.